Hi. Hello. Tansi. Bonjour. Good morning. I'm Dallas Arcan, and I'd like to welcome you to Pow Wow Dance Aerobics. Here's another version of our morning class. Sorry I'm late, but, uh, you know, I had to do some stuff. I had to uh, get ready for the class. You know, it takes me a lot of preparation to get this class going. Uh, I went for a one kilometer jog. I uh, saw my cousin on the road and uh, just decided to have a little visit. Anyways, um, you know, always on Indian time, especially out here on the res. I live out in Alexander First Nation. Um, and uh, the Cree word for that, and I'll give you a Cree word for the day, how we say our Alexander in in our language is, um, it doesn't actually translate to Alexander, but actually translate to something else, which I'll get to. So the word for that, uh, the name that we have in Cree for Alexander is Kaputagao. Kaputagao is, um, it really means in the valley because when you drive over, when you drive into our reserve, uh, you have to drive over a big hill. And then when you get to the top of the hill, you can see how the name comes to life because it really means in the valley. And that's what uh, Kaputagao means. Um, uh, or in a slough <laughs> or in the swamp, whatever, uh, because we have a lot of, um, we have a lot of sloughs here, a lot of, a lot of low water areas. And, um, you know, it's like I s explained before, a lot of First Nations lands that were given to First Nations, you know, it's kind of weird that First Nations were given their own lands. You know, like, uh, I'm going to give you your own land because uh, you're uh, First Nations and uh, we're going to put you on this preserve over here. You know, it's kind of like a concentration camp. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, it's like a refugee camp. But, uh, yeah, you guys got to stay on there and uh, you you can't come off unless you got to pass. Uh, I don't know if you guys know that about Indigenous history, First Nations history. Is that in my grandparents' generation, they actually had, a, had to have a pass to leave the reserve. You know, and so a lot of these things have been passed on from generation to generation. And that's why I feel it's important to talk about them. You know, I was reading some, I always read up on these articles and stuff on, on how we're dealing with systemic racism. Even this to this very day, you know, even though I'm not full First Nation, I live the lifestyle of a fir, fir, full First Nation individual, Aboriginal individual here, you know, because I got full status, I got full treaty, I'm part of Treaty 6 territory, and I fully understand and know my rights as a First Nations person. So I just thought I would share that little bit of information. So today's topic is dance to your own drum beat. So what I mean by that is for everybody to dance to their own drum beat. So we're all at different levels of fitness, different age levels. So we all have our own drum beat that we can dance to. Some of us are a little slower than others. Some of us are a little faster. But either way, when we do these exercises, this power dance aerobics, you do them at your own pace because it's, it's not a race, it's a pace. And we just need to go at the pace and understand our our heart rate. Oh, here we go. There we go. Uh, we have a link posted. So thanks, uh, Joanne, the uh, Indian Act and the pass system. Yes, that's that's very true that we actually had to have a pass to leave the reserve. So in a way, it was like a refugee camp once upon a time here. And nowadays, uh, you got to get a pass to get in <laughs> because of the COVID. Uh, we, we actually have to have our vehicles registered and they won't let us pass the security checkpoint. If you don't have a vehicle, it doesn't matter if it's your cousin or not. Your cousin's not going to let you through. So anyways, uh, enough about talking. Let's get dancing. And I want to get moving and grooving because I only have a short amount of time here to to do this class because I got to go about my day. So anyways, I got some some live recorded powwow music. So uh, for drum groups, I recommend checking out Young Bear. Um, they have several albums online. They're a championship drum group. Also check out Midnight Express. Also check out Northern Cree or check out uh, Ayabe, they're a classic group. Or locally here in Alberta, we have Iahe Nakoda, we have High Noon, we have uh, the Young Spirit Singers. There are several different drum groups that you can choose from. And once, once you go onto iTunes or Spotify, there's always recommended lists right under that. So what I recommend is if you want more dancing or more exercise, definitely put on an entire album 
of Northern Cree or whatever, you know, uh, the Northern Voice or Black Bear or Bear Creek or any one of those groups dance to a whole entire album. That's what I seldomly do in my training as a dancer. And this is not just about dancing here. This is power dance aerobics. So this is about lifestyle. This is about um, staying active, staying moving. And as you notice, I'm already moving my feet to a basic step, basic beat. And I don't know if all power dancers do this, but this is how I like to start my day. I like to start out with a good jog. I like to start out with some dancing. You know, somebody that takes dancing seriously is myself. You know, I'm a three-time world champion hoop dancer and I've been dancing for almost three decades now. I've been dancing for a very long time and I'm really grateful for my ability to dance and I'm gonna keep dancing for as long as I live. You know, because the oldest hoop dancer is a fellow by the name of Jones Benali. And if you scroll down the page, you can see an article or a video on Jones and he's still dancing even to this very day. Jones is uh, one of the most sought after dancers in the uh, history of hoop dance. Like a lot of people look up to Jones. Jones is like the godfather of hoop dance. You know, besides uh, the late great Tony White Cloud. Tony White Cloud was one of the very first hoop dancers that came from Taos Pueblo back in New Mexico. And he was, he was one of the very first to put the bedazzle or whatever you want to call it, the, the spectacularness in hoop dancing. Because originally it was just a ceremony and the hoop dance and the original format of the ceremony was just strictly about ceremonial protocols. And if you know ceremonies, they don't really dance around. It's not for entertainment. It's more for prayer, meditation, and focus. So here, here in Nakota, hey, I just talked about them. All right, so let's get those feet moving. Back and forth. Remember, we're not actually dancing, we're just doing exercises, okay? We're just getting the feet moving, getting the body moving. So the arms, legs, it's a total body workout. So right, left, one, two, step. Right, left, right, left, right, left. That's a nice beat to hop to. And I'm hitting every beat. You know, I'm, I'm bouncing like this. My feet are going like this. So it's giving me a good calf workout. It's giving me a quad workout. It's giving me a leg workout, an arm workout. Moving my arms back and forth. This is actually helping me lose weight and maintain my physique as I get older. I'm approaching 42 here, so it's definitely helping me stay in shape. All right, awesome. All right, now let's do some, some kicks, just some simple kicks. So it's best to cross, cross your hands with your feet. So my right hand, when my left foot comes out, it goes like that. It's a good balance of movement and it's ergonomically friendly, meaning that, you know, like I'm not straining one part of my body. I'm just moving with the beat, with a nice flow, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, got bucked off on that one anyways we got a song coming up um, I won't get into that but now it's time for us to stretch now that we've done a warm-up oh yeah another another legendary hoop dancer is watching right now I just seen hi Eddie Eddie swimmer um, he was one of the ones that I learned off of watching American Indian Dance Theater and if you don't know American Indian Dance Theater you don't know your history <laughs> But they are one of the most sought off, um, you know, most, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is, but 
they're one of the most uh, admired groups because they what they did is they picked some of the best dancers from around the country USA and Canada and they featured them on these really big stages and shows all across the country all over the world and I was actually asked at one point by Michael Roberts to join American Indian Dance Theater but uh, at the time I was very busy in my career and I was still in college so I, I was more committed to my studies and also being a young father I wasn't able to to travel at that time like I was still able to travel but not that kind of commitment so hello Eddie if you guys want to check out Eddie Swimmer look look him up he's uh, definitely a legendary dancer and uh, he's actually a judge at the uh, world champion hoop dance contest and uh, he's one of the the main judges oh sorry gotta let the dog in okay don't mind the little dog okay all right well, there you go Anyways, I got lots of pets in my house. Anyways, so as you know, I'm at home. This is my little makeshift home studio. So we're gonna start out small, stretching the wrist like this. This helps to um, loosen up the tendons in the arms. And this is where we get, you know, problems like carpal tunnel and stuff like that in our, in our lives. And you know, like it's really important to stretch every part of the body, you know, because everything's connected, the nerves, everything, the muscles. So a nice, a nice small circles, and then big circles like this, get a little bigger, and bigger, and bigger. And then from here, small, and work your way up to bigger, bigger circles. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna go left over right, right over left. This helps to loosen up the, uh, the chest area, and loosen up the shoulder muscles. And then from here, we just grab and lock your fingers together. Try to pull them apart, but don't actually pull them apart. And that you should feel that in the back of your uh, of your upper back and your shoulders. Try to pull this apart, and you're actually stretching your shoulder muscles. So you give it a nice twist back and forth like this, nice left and right. Uh, oh yeah, what I was saying about Eddie Swimmer earlier, Eddie, is that I learned um, by watching Eddie. I learned a lot of moves and styles. So I don't know if Eddie Swimmer would even see that in in my style even though I developed my own style. Um, when I was just starting out, that was one of the very few hoop dancers I was able to watch on TV. Because when I started, we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have, uh, we didn't have social, we didn't even have the internet when I first started. So, you know, we've come a long way. Uh, you know, we have all these technologies now that a lot of this stuff, you know, because of technology, the world has changed tenfold so anyways what i'm doing here is my neck stretch so i'm rolling from shoulder to shoulder here and i'm stretching out my neck muscles it's really important to do that as well and then uh, to extend that i put one hand on one side and then i lean away from it and this gives me a nice deltoid stretch and a nice shoulder stretch and neck stretch at the same time so then i go from this side as well it's important to do this because you know you could be driving your car one day and then all of a sudden you you turn your neck one one way and then all of a sudden you got a kink in your neck and and doing stretches helps prevent that kind of thing it helps to prevent injury and it prepares you for the day to come that's why i do it every day and i don't work unless i do that so anyways continuing on keep your arm straight pull it towards your body and that stretches out your shoulder and tricep muscle and that area and that's a good stretch as well. Same thing for here. And this one's really important too because we're gonna be doing some push-ups later and you're gonna feel this one. You're gonna feel it right in your tricep muscle and it's really important to do this kind of uh, stretch. All right, moving on. Next stretch, hands behind your head and what you're gonna do is just lean to the left or right, whatever is best first for you. But for me, it's always my left, I don't know why. But sometimes it's my right. I try not to let one side of my body dominate the other. You know, like how we have a more dominant side. Like, uh, I try to alternate sides just to give myself, my body a little break. Okay, then moving on. Make yourself into a nice T like this. And you just give it a nice twist from left to right. This one, I call it the tree stretch because it's like you're a tree. You know, trees, they teach us to be thankful. They teach us to be grateful. That's why they have their arms up. That's what an elder told me once. The trees are our greatest teachers because they're old, they're ancient, and they teach us lots. And we rely on them for their cycle. You know, and right now the leaves are turning and that's how you know it's gonna change seasons. 
And it's really important to know this. So a tree, when it's blown in the wind, it's either gonna break or get stronger. So that's a good philosophy to apply to the body. And you know, I hear uh, philosophers and stuff, they often talk about the tree of life, which is really important because understanding that, that you know, we're all part of that tree of life in some way, shape or form. So if, like we did our wrists, now let's do our ankles. What I'm doing is I'm doing some twists or some circles with my ankles and that helps loosen up the joint. You know, because we do take a lot of pressure and a lot of pounding on our joints throughout the day, especially the ankles. The ankles takes on the most weight. It takes on all your weight and then whatever you're carrying. You know, the weight that you carry throughout the day, it gets distributed right there, right in your ankle joint. So that's really important. So we're gonna do a few different ankle stretches. So this one's stretching more in the Achilles heel and uh, stretching out the calf muscle. Most people think it's just the calf muscle, but you're doing a lot more. You're actually stretching out that joint there. So, and then from here, same thing. We're stretching out the Achilles heel and tendon, and you're stretching out the calf muscle. And then moving on, place your heel to the floor, toe up, and you wanna just reach down ever so slightly. Try to touch your toe if you can. If not, just grab your leg. You know, like as long as you feel it underneath your leg, then you know this stretch is effective. And, you know, doing these stretches, you only need about 10 seconds for each stretch and we're almost done. We only got a few more stretches and then we're done and then we're back to dancing. So I know that, you know, people come and go and I know that you guys have busy days or whatever, but just remember, keep in mind that, you know, if you do this every day in the mornings, you'll notice a big difference in your energy level throughout the day. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are, because I started this in my early 20s and I noticed a big difference in doing this uh, versus not doing this. You know, and it's what's helped me stay in shape all these years. Because as you get older, you know, you, you consume calories, you, uh, you get injuries or, you know, you, you come into stress with your life. This is a good way to, to counter that. You know, yesterday I was climbing up and down ladders. I was climbing about 30 feet in the air. It was scary as hell, but I felt confident and comfortable up there enough that I, I, I didn't fear it so much because I knew that I'm in shape and I know that I can hold my own weight. I know that I can pick myself up. I know that I can hold myself up because I do exercises every day to exercise my muscles. Like I don't have big Dwayne Rock Johnson muscles, but I do I do maintain what I do have and I try to build on that. So anyways, uh, with that, uh, let's have a quick water break. And then if you guys are ready, all 50 of you that I see that are online live, 51 of you now, okay? And if you want to take the challenge, let's do the 25 push-up challenge. Oh, we lost one. Okay, back to 50. Oh, 48. Oh, they're dropping off. Okay, well, don't worry about it. All 45 of you. Oh, okay, we're dropping off. As soon as I mentioned push-ups, there are people running for the hills. Anyways, don't worry because if you can't do 25, maybe just do five at a time or do 10 or whatever, you know, because it's not about a contest here. It's all about taking on the challenge for yourself, for your health. So I don't get paid to do this channel. I don't get paid to broadcast this video. If anything, it costs me money to, to broadcast this every day. And, but this is my gift back. And I'm very thankful for what the people have given me in my career. And this is how I give back as an artist. I'm very thankful and grateful. You know, not everybody does that. You know, I'm, I'm, one, of the, I'm one of the ones that, that do that. And I'm, I'm, still, uh, I'm, I'm still trying my best to find new ways to give back. And this is one of them. So anyways, here we go, here we go. Are you guys ready, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for 25 push-ups? Okay, so girls, you can use your knees. You don't have to go full out extension plank like on your toes, like normal push-ups. And guys, come on guys. If you can't do the push-ups, don't worry about it. Maybe just try the girl version. Uh, there's no shame in that. I've done the girl version myself, you know, especially when I found myself out of shape. So anyways, <coughs> if you guys are ready, we're gonna do this in five. Four, three, two, one. Drop and give me 25. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and one more for good luck. 26. Oh, yeah. Oh, that feels good. Yeah, and there's lots of other things you could do with those push-ups as well. There's other exercises where you lift your knees like that. So, anyways, if you guys... Oh, yeah, I forgot to even play some flute music. Uh, I usually put on my meditation music. Sorry about that. How about I just return the favor by playing you guys a little flute song with my flute? Luckily, I had it right here. So, here we go. Here's my flute. There you go. Whew, it was hard to do that after those push-ups. I was like running out of breath a little bit. Anyways, that was a song. Uh, it was originally done by uh, Carlos Nakai. If you don't know Carlos Nakai, he's actually one of the one of the top-notch flute players. Besides Tony Duncan, Tony Duncan's up there too. You know, I admire Tony Duncan for his his. Uh, I, I hear that he's doing his tenth album, and he's actually going to be featured on the Social Distance Powwow. So be sure to check that out. Uh, Tony Duncan, thanks for all your, your lovely work. And, uh, you know, him too, he's an amazing artist. <clears throat> all right, so without further ado, here we go. We're gonna do back some more dancing. Uh, we'll do a couple more songs and then we'll do a cool down right after that. So I won't keep you folks too long. Cause I got, I got stuff to do today too. I gotta teach a class uh, for Nalkin. And uh, eventually I'm gonna have some of my students here. All right, let's get moving and grooving. Oh yeah, I forgot, dictionaries, dictionaries, weights. Um, if you haven't already got them, get some weights. These are little two pounders. If you can't get those, then use books. Use some dictionaries. They're not only good for reading, they're good for working out. Get some books or uh, get some uh, soup cans or whatever, you know, anything for a little bit of weight. All right, back to dancing, all right. So the basic step, now right, left, one, two, step, and right, left, one, two, step, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, switch, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and switch, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 Switch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, turn, two, three, four, five, All right. We're gonna do a new move. <laughs> I call this uh, scissor crossovers. And uh, oh, we're running out of song here. Okay. I knew it was coming to an end. <clears throat> 
All right, so we're gonna do a couple of, a couple of new moves. Uh, there's a couple of contemporary moves that I'm going to incorporate into this, but they're really cool and challenging, fun moves to do. So if you guys are ready, oh yeah, nice and mellow beat. So what we're gonna do is crossovers with our feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now let's go every beat. Every beat, so that was every second beat. So now let's challenge ourselves a bit and see if we can wrap our brain and our body around that same movement. It's a little bit more challenging, so take a deep breath of air. Remember to breathe deep. Remember, breathing is really important through all this. So breathe really deep and don't don't breathe so fast. Just breathe nice and slow, in deep, in through your nose and out through your mouth, like that. Okay, you ready? Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, switch, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, now moving on. We're going to do something a little bit different now. Some of you might recognize this move. It's more of a, it comes from the, comes from the hood a little bit. And it's, uh, it's known as the sea walk. Now if you don't know the sea walk, it's basically, you go like this, you kick out. One, two, and then one, two, like that. Okay, let's see if we can do that. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, one, two. 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 There we go. Two, two, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. song and then we'll do uh we'll do a cool down after that oh yeah there's a crow hop okay so i believe we got a crow hop coming along and wow i'm sweating really good and it's helping that i'm still wearing this sweater see as you can see i'm uh keeping my body heat in and sweating is one of three ways to remove toxins from your body. There's two other ways, which you know what they are, right? Number one, number two. So number three is actually sweating through your uh, 
skin and uh, your skin is actually your biggest organ in your body. So what I do is I make sure to wear the, uh, a shirt that'll soak up that sweat and you know, will, will help my skin breathe at the same time. And it's really important for that, you know, especially if you're exercising, you know, holy man, uh, really sweating good. But that's good, and that's, that's, that's what you want out of your workout. Especially a cardio workout, like dancing, dance aerobics. Because they say only about, you only need about 20 minutes of dancing, and it's gonna burn about 700 calories. So, anyways, <coughs> if you guys are ready, uh, I'm ready to go for one more dance, and then we'll do a cool down dance from there. So, make sure to have lots of water. Uh, you know what I noticed? Uh, a lot of my family or whatever, you know, people, People on the res, they, they like drinking a lot of pop, eh? And uh, that's poison for the body, for the brain. Like me, I, I drink pop, like I'm guilty of it. I drink pop once in a while. But uh, you know, if, if that's all you drink all the time, you know, I'm guilty, I guess, of drinking a lot of coffee. I like my coffee. But uh, you know, I, I kind of balance it out with a little bit of water. You know, I definitely have a couple of cups of water and have some coffee. The first thing I have in the morning is actually water and uh, I make sure to hydrate myself because things like coffee and pop, they dehydrate you, they do the opposite. And it's really hard on your, on your kidneys, on your system. And that could cause health problems later on when you get older, like my, my auntie has health problems now, now that she's a little bit older, she's on dialysis. And you know, that, that must be terrible to live like that, you know, to be on dialysis. But what you can do though, is you can take preventative measures by you know balancing it out with water say if you do like pop and coffee you can actually uh you know dilute it with water and and make it a little bit easier for your kidneys to function and then you won't have that problem anyways uh enough talking uh, i talk too much sometimes <laughs> uh anyways um good morning everybody i hope you guys are having a good day let's get on with it and do one more song then we'll do cool down all right so here we go I don't like crow hops. Anyways, I uh, <coughs> hope you guys got a good workout, a good day. As you can see, I certainly did. Sweating out all those toxins. I've been uh, doing a, a detox for the past few days. Feels good. All right. 
So let's do the cool down now. Like how we started with the basic step, we're doing a cool down now. So we got to uh, bring our heart rate back down now. So just a nice light dance. You know, anytime you do any physical activity, you got to be aware of your heart rate. And it's different based on age. So the younger you are, the higher your heart rate, your target heart rate is. But as you, the older you get, your target heart rate kind of lowers. So if you're younger, like 20 something years old, your heart, your target heart rate is about a 140, 150. It's way up there. But my age, I'm 40, approaching 42. Actually, I'm not 40, I'm 41. Duh. <laughs> um, see, that's the thing, when you get older, you're like, how old am I again? <laughs> Anyways, uh, do myself a little courtesy wipe there. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm approaching uh, 42. And look at, not too bad, not too bad looking for 42, you know? Um, keeping my keeping myself healthy with my age and I'm gonna try to keep keep that stomach nice and flat you know even though it does get a little big at times you know especially in the winter months it's hard to keep it down but you gotta uh, you gotta basically keep on it you know just just because you get a little bit overweight don't give up on yourself you know don't let go of yourself you know it's it's easy to do you know, it's a lot harder to stay in shape and uh, you know keep your yourself in tune. But anyways, as I was saying, as the the heart rate, you know, you got to think of it like uh, like horses in a race, right? When the horses do their horse race, they have to do a warm up first, right? They, their jockey or whatever will warm them up, walk them, get them going, and uh, then when it's time to race, then they just get it, right? They hit the ground running, and then after the race, it's really important for them to. To slow down to do a trot down like a nice slow down and you know bring your heart rate back to a nice safe safe level so that your body can handle it because if you don't then you know you're probably gonna have a heart attack and, and that's what some horses do like the sport competitive horses I've, I've even seen it <coughs> I've seen it uh, you know being a part of the Calgary Stampede and there's like this huge controversial thing saying that they're being cruel to the animals, but no, they're far from it at the Calgary Stampede. They're really good to the horses. The horses get treated better than the humans in some cases, you know, like they get treated like, like babies, you know, like. <coughs> so anyways, <coughs> still still getting that over the, the cold that I just had. And I, I didn't have COVID, I had the, the seasonal flu or something like that, some sort of head cold. And I'm um, still like, a uh, little bit, little bit left. There's a little bit, you know, as you get older, it gets harder to shake those colds. Now my uh, my mom's got it, unfortunately, and I feel bad for her, but, uh, you know, I'll be just, just encouraging her to drink water and, you know, just stay, stay active, stay in motion, and, you know, just try to stay healthy. So, anyways, um, hope you guys are doing good. So, thanks again for joining me for another class of Pow Wow Dance Aerobics. This is a class I do every day and um, I hope that you guys are well out there and if you find this message of value at the very least uh, hit the like button on my page uh, we're just approaching 11,000 uh, likes on the page so thank you very much for everybody that's liked the page and um, you know if you find the message of value as well share it with your friends um, share it on uh, your different media outlets and uh, as well our, our friendly reminder to uh, subscribe to my YouTube page. We got about 30 more 30 more subscriptions to go before we get our 1k uh, Goal before I can start broadcasting live on there and the, the reason why I want to do that is to deliver this on more platforms because I want to Deliver this class and the only way I can do that is because of YouTube's policy. I'm uh, I have to have 1,000 subscriptions on my page and we're almost there. We, we've we've jumped a lot since we started. I originally only had like maybe a hundred followers on there because I didn't really use YouTube a lot. I was like, YouTube, YouTube. I was like, eh. Then my manager is like, he's like, yeah, you, you gotta up the subscriptions on your YouTube page so we can uh, go live. And I was like, oh, okay. So, okay, I'm, I'm doing that. So with that, uh, I wish you guys all the best. Uh, have a beautiful day. Keep fit, have fun, stay safe. And uh, we'll catch you later. Have a beautiful day. Peace out.